What nonsense? You little devil. Do you want to die? Thank God nothing happened on my way to a place where an accident happened many years ago. A fire accident. And the establishment came to a halt. It was the Ravi Varma Lithographic Press. Here it stands, name board even removed. Ravi Varma Lithographic Press in Lonavala, a hill station, which is shifted from Mumbai, where it started functioning in 1886. It is from this press that gods and goddesses with human faces started their journey into the prayer rooms of common people of India. The press started by Raja Ravi Varma wasn't the first in India, however. Earlier printing was done in Kolkata, but it was mostly for the use of printing books, and the technical and artistic mastery showed by Ravi Varma was unmatched. This press could provide prints throughout the nation with about 40,000 lithographic stones. Ravi Varma started this press with the capital of 80,000 rupees, the remuneration he got from his Baroda commission of mythological paintings. When this amount was inadequate, he made a Mumbai-based businessman as his partner. Since Ravi Varma lacked a good business acumen, the press at last went into the hands of Slicher, the German technician at the Ravi Varma press. Prayer rooms of many homes in India contain at least one print of Ravi Varma's gods and goddesses. Thousands of these lithostones, which were the main asset of the press, are now destroyed or taken away to some unknown destination. History hijacked. The vibrations of artistic heritage one feels when entering into the premises of Kilimanjaro Palace is amazing. Ravi Varma belonged to this palace of aristocratic Hindu Chhatriya family, an elite warrior class. But warfare and military prowess in his family had long been a thing of the past. Fine arts and music were the accomplishments that several members of his family sought after. Sanskrit scholars, poets and musicians were to be found amongst his close relations. His mother, besides practicing Ayurvedic medicine, also composed music for the traditional Dulal opera performances, which were held in the dance halls of feudal courts. Parvati Swayambaram is a poetic work meant for Tulal performance, which was written by Ravi Varma's mother, Uma Ambabai Tamburati, and published posthumously by Ravi Varma. <laughs> The members of the family usually engage themselves in recitals of epics like the Bhagavata and the Ramayana during their leisure time. Kathakali and Kudiyatam troops were maintained in the palace and the strains of its music and drumbeats complemented the classical ragas as they regularly echoed within the premises. The impact of this cultural background is evident in his paintings like The Birth of Shakuntala and Krishna at Envoy. Rhetorical postures, the hyperbolic gestures, notably the enlarged pupils of the eyes, are none other than the mimics conventions of Kathakali, the dance drama of Kerala. Mumbai was almost a second home to Ravi Varma. During his sojourn in Mumbai, his interest in theatre and other performing arts like music and dance got wide exposure. And these art forms had great influence on him, especially the Parsi theatre. A lot of sketches were drawn by him in this time. He used to paint these figures in a later period, no matter where he was stationed. 
It is during one of his short stays in Mumbai he happened to see the drama Shakuntal by Anna Sahib Kiloska, a Parsi theatre production. This obviously had an influence on Ravi Varma's later canvases on Shakuntala. Mumbai life of Ravi Varma is sketched in his brother Raja Raja Varma's diary, and it has a lot to speak. It reveals Varma's use of models and the difficulty involved in it. Many sketches were found for the painting At the Bath, which Ravi Varma did in 1902. This painting, a masterpiece now housed in Kaudia Palace, Thiravanandapuram, is modelled on a Mohammedan prostitute. Anjana Malpeka was a dancer and a musician from Mumbai who posed as a model for several of Ravi Varma's paintings. For the paintings of Mohini, Lakshmi, Saraswati, and Ganga, Anjana was evidently the model. The artist's daughter, Mahaprabha Thamburati, and her son, Martanda Varma, became models for the painting, Here Comes Papa. The identity of the model for the painting, Malabar Beauty, is unknown. But the existence of a model for this painting is revealed through this photograph. And she is Rajibai, Varma's model featured in Lady with a Fan, executed by Frank Brooks, who was commissioned by Ravi Varma to teach